What you can see here is Huichilo Pochtli, it's an Aztec god of war. One of the rituals that the Aztecs had was to make some biscuits that they devoted to the gods and they ate these biscuits in the belief that they would inherit the powers of the god. In fact, the, what gave them that strength was the proteins of the plant that they used. The, protein, the diet, normal diet of the Aztec population was quite limited. But the proteins they got from this plant, the amaranth, was quite helpful. The, when the Spaniards arrived, they thought that making these figures of a god out of a, a wafer of a biscuit seemed to be similar to the Christian concept of communion. So they banned it, they banned the growing of this plant. And as I said, this plant, amarantho, the amaranth plant, had a lot of proteins, but it was forgotten for many years. And it's been abandoned for 500 years until a few decades ago it was recovered. This molecule that you see here is glycophosphate. And glycophosphate is the active substance in the largest herbicide in the world. It's called Roundup. It's produced by a multinational Monsanto company. It produces genetically modified seeds to be able to resist this herbicide. In Arizona, Arizona in 2007, the Roundup Ready soy in Arizona, that's to say the genetically modified soy that could withstand this large concepts of herbicide were lost because of a weed that was resistant to the herbicide and resistant to all attempts to eradicate that particular weed. That wheat was nothing other than amaranth, and one of the varieties of amaranth that the Aztecs themselves used to grow for their food. The person we see here is Norman Borlaug. He's the father of the Green Revolution. That was a movement during the 1960s through developments in technology for food and agriculture. He tried to make many countries self-sufficient in terms of food supply. He won the Nobel Peace Prize because it's calculated that he saved thousands of millions of lives. Norman Borgler said that his biotechnological dream was to transfer resistance to pests of to rice or to wheat, or to transfer the characteristics of uh, wheat to rice. But that's not been possible so far. But he's been working in Mexico for a long time. He realized that this harvest, this crop, had greater hmm, potential than wheat and a better resistance and greater profile than rice. And it was, in fact, this amaranth crop. Amaranth is simply an example, a very interesting example of how many old crops that have been forgotten for a long time could be very important. The FAO is of the opinion that around 7,000 different species have been grown for human consumption. Nowadays, only 3,000 are grown and only about 350 of those species are of economic interest. Of these, rice, wheat, soya and maize cover most of the uh, territory of the world and only seven cover 90% of the uh, food intake of humans. Norman Borlaug said once uh, very humbly that the Green Revolution was only a temporary revolution. We need a second Green Revolution and we're immersed in that second Green Revolution now. There are many fronts open and we have to continue working on it, but without a doubt one of those fronts is rediscover crops and foods that have been forgotten and begin to use them again for the future. Thank you very much.
Thank <laughs> you.